we present Shading Atlas Dreaming, a novel solution for rendering in virtual reality and distributed environments. Virtual reality setups typically consist of a powerful server for rendering and a tethered, head-mounted display with limited processing capabilities. Traditional approaches continuously stream rendered images to the client. The HMD tries to hide latency with a variety of image-based rendering techniques. However, these approaches are limited. For optimal user experience, HMDs need to render with at least 60 frames per second per eye. IBR techniques try to mask latency artifacts at the HMD using previous frames. In case of high latency or low input frame rates, the quality decreases rapidly. This could be solved by considering predicting viewpoints based on user movements, but the number of predicted poses has a large impact on the bandwidth. Moreover, the screen resolution of the display devices continuously increases. The combination of these factors demand a very high bandwidth. Currently, only tethered connections can deal with such high data throughput rates. These limit the user's workspace and mobility to the direct vicinity of the server. Shading Atlas Streaming approaches these issues from a different point of view. We transmit only the visible geometry and the shading atlas to the HMD. The client rasterizes the geometry and applies the shading information from the shading atlas. Our approach drastically reduces the bandwidth while maintaining high quality, enabling a fully wireless VR experience. The shading atlas is at the core of our system. It consists of shaded patches which represent rectified triangle strips. During pre-processing, we determine the patch subdivision of the input geometry. While one to three connected triangles can form a patch, we prefer to combine two neighbors. This layout optimizes the atlas occupancy and avoids seams at the edges. For patches with large edge ratios, we introduce rectangular layouts. The atlas memory management operates on hierarchical layers. The first layer consists of equally sized square superblocks. Each superblock is subdivided into columns of equal width. The columns hold blocks suiting their width but with variable height. A block in the atlas contains the shading information of a single patch. The hierarchy enables us to manage the atlas on the GPU and block-free parallel mapping of patches into the atlas. The end-to-end -end pipeline consists of the following stages. First, we determine potentially visible patches on the server. We rasterize the scene content with the current view matrix and additionally from a number of prospective viewpoints. In the level selection stage, we determine which block size to allocate. The size a patch occupies in the atlas directly relates to its screen projection. Moreover, we try to preserve the aspect ratio of the projected triangle in the atlas. In the next step, we map all potentially visible patches to the shading atlas. The parallel memory management consists of three phases. The request phase records how many patches require a new block in the atlas. It also frees blocks related to patches that have become invisible. Patches that request changing their block level trigger both steps. The provisioning phase checks if patches can draw available blocks and allocates new superblocks for those that cannot. The assignment phase distributes the provisioned blocks. Once all patches are mapped, we shade them in the atlas. We can use a standard geometry rendering pipeline and since patches do not overlap in the atlas, do not require a depth buffer. This step concludes the server-side rendering. Next, the transmission stage sends both geometry and the shading atlas to the client. For the atlas transmission, we use GPU-based MPEG encoding. We incrementally transmit geometry to the client as it becomes visible. The client decodes the received data and renders the scene. It rasterizes the potentially visible geometry in a standard rendering pipeline. Instead of complex shading operations, it simply texture maps the atlas. The following sequences compare our approach with several techniques from literature. We simulate a total delay of around 120 milliseconds for all techniques, including shading atlas streaming. We adapted the output frame rate to that of the video, which is 24 frames per second. Asynchronous time warping produces artifacts at the borders during rapid rotation. Our linear post prediction model avoids those artifacts by transmitting sufficient geometry in advance. During rapid translation, tearing artifacts appear for mesh warping approaches, especially in regions with large depth disparity.
Iterative image warping also produces tearing artifacts at the frame border after abruptly changing the direction of rotation. Another disadvantage of asynchronous time warping manifests during fast translation along the view direction. Besides perceivable stutter, the delay may cause features to appear at the wrong location and lag behind. Under certain circumstances, our linear post prediction fails to capture rapid composite transformations. This is also an issue for related techniques. Nevertheless, our prediction quickly catches up and transmits the corresponding geometry. Rapid direction changes are also problematic for mesh warping. Some transforms may fail to produce a faithful interpolation of the missing data, manifesting in ghosting or missing geometry.